오세요. 오세요. 체크 그린. 먼데요 와나 먼데요 와나 먼데요 와나 레리 본이 소 먼데요 와나 We are a nation of this earth. Hey hey hey. We are a nation of this earth. Hey hey. We are a nation of this earth. Hey hey. In the glory of the rain. We are the nation. Hey hey. In the rising of buffalo grass. We are the nation. Hey hey. In the life of Turtle Island. We are her nation. Hey hey hey. What we are. Inside, below the social whirling, is nation, nation, animal nation, the buffalo nation, and we are in danger, and that is what we love. We love this danger. We are deep inside. We are deep inside. So deeply, we are a nation. Of this earth, hey hey hey, hey hey. This is coyote medicine for the good of the nation at large. And this month is November. November is a liminal month, a threshold month, and it is the month of the Hitlies, the universal wind, and it is also the month for Native American heritage. And yesterday was also. The day for Native American storytellers, yours truly, and it is also the month of the Beaver Moon. So look up here to my Beaver Moon, and it's most auspicious. The Beaver uh, is going to provide stability and balance to the state of the nation at large. So start off with that. I have a ancient beaver chant here. It was sitting above south of red uh, beaver. Uh, he killed. Uh, he died. Uh, he was sitting above west of uh, yellow uh, beaver. Uh, he killed. Uh, he died. Uh, he was sitting above north of uh, black uh, beaver. Uh, he died. Uh, he killed. Uh, he was sitting above east of uh, white. Uh, Beaver, uh -huh. he killed, uh -huh. it died. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Beaver has all the quarters all the way around. So that's why we go all the way around. So we are summoning the beaver for uh, balance and stability um, for the country at large here. Uh, the beaver uh, in the woodlands people in the Cherokee. Uh, is very, very ancient. i start off here just to show this piece here. This is a medicine piece. This is my Mary Otis of the Beaver Clan. The beavers were once a very, very great nation. Um, really, really big and they built pretty big cities and so forth. And the ancient lore, especially the, the Cherokee, have a lot of the ancient beaver stories. There was even a huge beaver at large. So all kind of beavers. And I'm going to show right down here. Can you look right down here? This is a, a stone pipe. And it has a beaver head. And it has wings. This is a mythical beaver. And this is from 2,000 years ago from the culture we modernly call Hopewell culture that was up around the northern Ohio River there and they built them mounds. So there you can see the antiquity of the beaver in all of this. So there are all kind of stories with old people of the beavers. The kind of beavers that they used to be they were very big. Now that's to say that people still have dream of beavers. If you have a dream of the beaver, that's called really, that's a pretty big, pretty important dream. And the dreams uh, bring knowledge. Now the animals, any of the animals, these animals are the 
we would say the attributes of the persons that had been in the early time, when you say, when all the animals were people. So still, those people come through to us in the form of animals, but sometimes they will also uh, look like people as well. So that's the kind of knowledge that the beaver is going to bring at this time. And I have some other beavers over there, like that. So people who have the, the, the beaver clan or they have the beaver dreams, they will have ways of uh, bonding with that being, that spirit, we can call that. In Cherokee, it's one of the clans, the beaver clan, Dai, will be that. Uh, the beaver moon is uh, Chapa Luna. Chapa Luna is the beaver moon. So to think of all that is right here at this time that we in the nation at large, we need this. We need this balance and we need this stability. So that's the way we're talking here. The other thing that's coming up here in this week uh, is what is being called the Thanksgiving. And I've been doing things for this for a long time, for this, uh, they call it a holiday. So if you say a few things off. Um, a turkey seems to be the uh, main star of all the shows of people eating. Now Native Americans do not tr traditionally or culturally or customarily dine on the bird that's called turkey. The turkeys also are people and they are a nation. Now they are a very free nation. So the they don't come under being domesticated lightly at all, if at all. Now the turkeys that everybody is dining on actually is an Aztec turkey. The Aztec that the people we call down there in, in Mexico up until the 16th to 17th century, um, they somehow with a lot of experiment managed to bring this particular species of the turkey under their control, we would call it. And so all turkeys now that are dinable are Aztec turkeys, <laughs> like that. The turkeys back east in the woodlands, they were very, very large, very, very statuesque, and their feathers were not as bright as we are customarily seeing turkeys nowadays. In my display here, here we have a turkey. And the way I've arranged this turkey is with the feathers, the tail feathers fanned out. When it, the feathers are fanned out like this, this is the universe in its manifestation with all of the created worlds. And the individual feathers stand for the basic elements in the strength of nature. The elements, the you know, earth, wind, water, fire, those kind of elements. And that's the way that I have arranged this here. And here, this is my illustration. I've derived this actually from an ancient, um, kind of like murals in the, ru in the ruins of um, what they call like calling kivas over there in New Mexico. I don't quite remember the name of that right now. But that's my rendition here. The other thing about the turkey is to look at the feather here. This feather, this kind of feather, like that from the tail feather, what, what that's about. It's about the rain. So you see on top, that would be the culminous clouds. And then underneath it, you see, that's the darkness of the cloud. And that means it's laden with rain. And then you see those kind of stripes going down. Those are the sheets of rain coming down. And the way I have fashioned this one over here, that's a kind of like you would call a prayer rain stick. So painted with blue and green like that and pointed. And that's put in the ground. That's put in the ground so to attract or call for rain. So that's the main thing why that she has that there. 
uh, in the story that I'm going to, to tell, you will see that here she has out her wing. Her wing is always, you know, very comforting. It's very, very comforting. So in the story, she is comforting uh, the young lad we call the visionary. And out of her wings come all of these seeds and corn and things like that. So she's kind of instrumental in bringing about what we're calling here agriculture. So that what's going on there. Now the eagle feathers, the eagle feathers are envoys. They're to carry our prayers or, or praise or anything up to Thunderbird, up to the great beings up there. That's what the eagle feathers are. Here these are all turkey feathers. So these all have their own uh, meaning, their own benefits. And so people still are using turkey feathers. In the old days back east, the people instead of using eagle feathers, the way we have later seen the plains people, they actually wore the, the turkey feathers for their headdresses if they had them. Um, or, you know, however that they use them. So just showing out the difference of the turkey feathers, which still are prevalent as different from the use of the eagle feathers that people are accustomed with. Now we're going to tell a, a story. This story is um, a story of over there in Arizona. It's from the Navajo. Um, the river that is the main river that goes up uh, northern Arizona up into Utah and, and down over there into uh, western New Mexico. That's called the San Juan River. It's called the River of Old Age. And this story is going on over there. So it starts out with this uh, young fellow. He's a young fellow. He lives with his mother and his sister and his sister has a pet turkey also. And he must live very close to this river because he gets an idea, wanderlust, wanderlust, I think we would say, <laughs> that he wants, he wants to travel and see where he can go on this river. So he uh, somehow secures a log, a tree log, that looks big enough to fit him. He can fit in it. So he you know, worked on it. He you know, fashioned it out and scooped it out and so forth. So, it, this is totally experimental, never, never been done before. This totally coming out of his own idea. Well, there are these supernatural beings, uh, deities, but we call them gie. Gie are these supernatural beings. And they're, they're watching this, all this that he's doing. And I know that they were very impressed because I do know such beings exist. And they will be impressed if they see what you're doing and they like it. So they decided to, you know, chip in because they really figured out that this log wasn't really going to going to float the way he was thinking. So they they kind of took over and they began to to fashion it. While they were doing that, another of the gay took the pet turkey aside. Now this is an illustration over here. Go way over there to that. And you see this illustration. This illustration I have actually replicated from a rock. There is a place over there, it seems maybe almost in uh, New Mexico, um, and part of the San, near the San Juan River, there are several uh, petroglyphs. It's kind of like uh, cliffs, almost like in horseshoe shapes, with quite a few paintings on them, and a lot of them do look like turkeys or something like that one way or another and I picked out the best one for that and what we're seeing here is the figure underneath is a ye who is called a humpback which means he is a deity of the big horn sheep so that's what they call him and above him you see the bird the turkey now they are made of red and white and so this means that what the gay is doing, he is changing this bird, this pet turkey. He's changing him into something special. And 
you see that his uh, ha hands are like this. What I'm using my hands. When you look at my hand here, can you see my hand? <laughs> Buddy. So what he's doing, he's do he's turning his hand like this. And this this is a gesture for transformation. So that this petroglyph that I've accurately uh, replicated is really showing what's going on here. That he is transforming this bird and it does have the turkey tracks there with it. So we know all who this is and what it's about. So that's what's going on. And then when everything gets ready, now the visionary we call him, because he has this vision of he wants to do this. And so he gets himself in this log that's now pretty much like a submarine. They put in, you know, special crystal windows and everything. So he's pretty, you know, pretty, pretty good little submarine, we would call it. And he gets in that and they, you know, sort of send him on his way going down this river of old age. Now the story goes on very long, of course, because all kinds of things happen to him and they, they, they have to come and rescue him from one situation after another. But in this, this is sort of a story sketch. I can't go through all of these uh, episodes because that's what they are, which probably story-wise is bringing various, you know, unusual supernaturals into view and giving you some idea of their functions. And sometimes they need offerings and so that will be included as to what will you know, secure their, their help or their goodwill. Among these is also the beaver. The beaver is also, he's just a good fellow pretty much all the way around. And so the beaver will come in also to help the visionary uh, along his way. So that is a figure in this. Eventually, um, the, the boy, the submarine, the visionary, they all come to some place in the river that's kind of like a whirlpool. And so the, the submarine, the log submarine, starts turning around and around like that. <clears throat> and they've made uh, sand paintings of this and they always title it um, the whirling logs. And in the pictures what happens is that various of these, these gays get on each end of the log to balance it like this. So the red ring actually looks like a cross with this so it resembles the kind of a cross that we customarily call a swastika, but that's not what it is. It just looks like it. And it's the way that the guillotines are balancing this log. It then eventually then goes ashore. It goes ashore there and now the visionary gets out of his submarine and walks on this brand new land. He hasn't seen it before like that. And just really wondering and looking about it. But he's just there just a short time and when he starts hearing coming off the, the, the distance and you know, gobble, 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 gobble. And here comes his sister's pet turkey. Comes down and joins him. Well, pretty soon, I mean, right off, I mean, he's quite, quite a journey. I mean, really quite a journey. So he's a little bit tired. So, you know, he sits, lays down, you know, kind of sits down and, and uh, the turkey, you know, puts puts her wing, you know, ar around him to comfort him and uh, give him some rest. So, you know, they do that for a little spell. Now, I mean, he gets up and he looks around and he's thinking, this is going to be a good place to, well, to, to farm. However, he was thinking of how he could farm. You have to have something, you know, to plant. And so, the turkey began to run around in a pattern. He made a certain pattern. And in this pattern, he was showing the way to uh, cultivate, to cultivate. And he was shedding seeds out of his wings. These different kind of seeds, we would say bean and corn and squash and all that. All that is a kind of uh, planting the seeds. So, all that took place in that kind of 
setting out, you know, the uh, perimeter for what was going to be this uh, cultivated place. Uh, once he did that, the visionary kind of became curious about other things, you know, so he went kind of walking off and wandering off. And in that, you know, he ran into something else, that something else happened to be an attractive girl, his age. <laughs> And she took him home to her father. And this father is a kind of, you know, sorcerer or something like that, you know. You know, it's just a little bit funny. Um, but he seems to have the power over animals. So that's what we're kind of calling him. He is the, you know, the boss of animals. And so, you know, through some experience and interchange there, the visionary also learns of something about hunting. You know, this is all the idea is going to be taken back to the people that he's grown up with. But he eventually, he goes through that episode and he gets back to where he started and he sees that the turkey is gone. He's left. And now he's really sad. And so he actually, you know, sits down and kind of composes a whole lament, you know, for that. And in that lament, he is sort of reciting all the benefits that the bird is going to be for people. How, you know, the colors in his feathers or, you know, his beard and, and, and the future for um, having agriculture, having seed. So his, his song of lament is uh, very beneficial and, of course, in the way of the story, or we can say myth, this is the way that the people who hear this story are realizing the benefits of this bird, the turkey. And so nobody would, you know, kill and dine on this bird. Um, somebody actually said, this bird is, is kind of like the way you would think about Lassie, the, the collie, you wouldn't, want to, <laughs> you wouldn't want to do that. So that's, you know, pretty much what, it, what the story is about in short, I'm putting that in short. So all of this I'm presenting for this uh, Thanksgiving so that people may be thinking of all of this in a different way. And also really, really that we want to see in the nation at large uh, come to the balance. Now the beaver is also figured even as, you know, by some people calling him the father, he's the father of humans, of mankind like that. And he, that super or cosmic beaver, he manages the center pole, the center pole that keeps our world functioning and together. So we do not want him to gnaw that in half because the whole thing will come down. So we are always, always thinking of all the things we do, our rituals and things like that, that he will always remember us and, and hope for the good, it deals the true good. Now I'm going to finish this up with an, another wonderful poem from our very, very favorite poet, Mary Oliver. This poem, Mary Oliver, is titled the family. The dark things of the wood are coming from their caves, flexing muscle. They browse the orchard, nibble the sea of grasses around our yellow rooms, scarcely looking in to see what we are doing, and if they still know us. We hear them or think we do, the muzzle lapping moonlight, the tooth in the apple. Put another log on the fire, Mozart again on the turntable. Still, there is a sorrow with us in the room. We remember the cave. In our dreams, we go back, or they come to visit. They also like music. We eat leaves together. 
or they are they are our brothers they are the family outside every door Thank you.